For 100 years, Tutankhamun has been known to the world as the boy king, a young, inexperienced ruler, who was still a child when he came to the throne. And even with all of our knowledge today, Tutankhamun is presented as frail, sickly, and possibly deformed. But now new evidence has emerged that suggests the ancient Egyptian pharaoh may have been a fearsome warrior in his own right. New evidence suggests that King Tutankhamun may have been a more fearsome ruler than once believed. Thanks to the work of modern archaeologists, we have thousands of relics from the tomb of Tutankhamun, who died more than 3,000 years ago. But until recently, we knew little about his life. Now archaeologists have uncovered a series of stone carvings that paint a very different picture of the boy king. Before his tomb was discovered in 1922, Tutankhamun was little more than a footnote in ancient history, known to few outside the realms of Egyptology. But all that changed when Howard Carter, an archaeologist working in collaboration with the British aristocrat Lord Carnarvon, began digging in the Valley of the Kings. While wintering abroad in Cairo for the sake of his health, Carnarvon had begun studying Egyptology as a way to pass the time. This hobby soon developed into a full blown passion, and he began funding digs to search for ancient treasures. In 1907, Carter joined the team, tasked with supervising excavations in Thebes. According to reports, the pair quickly formed a bond. And in 1914, they traveled to the Valley of the Kings on the western banks of the Nile River. Although some archaeologists had dismissed the idea that further tombs were waiting to be discovered at the site, Carnarvon and Carter still held out hope for something special. The pair's tenacity would be rewarded in spades. Working on and off for eight years, Carter excavated the burial ground of the Egyptian pharaohs, hoping to find some previously undiscovered treasure. And finally, in November 2022, he was successful. Buried under debris that had been piling up for thousands of years, he stumbled upon an ancient tomb. At first, Carnarvon and Carter didn't know exactly what they'd discovered. But when they saw the inscription carved into the doorway, they realized that they'd found the final resting place of Tutankhamun, the 18th dynasty pharaoh who died long ago in 1323 BC. This, in other words, was no ordinary tomb. The significance of the discovery was confirmed three months later, when excavators finally broke through the sealed entrance to reveal the contents of the tomb beyond. By this point, the cultural phenomenon known as Ditmania had reached fever pitch, with amateur Egyptologists around the world clamoring for news of the long-dead king. But what Carnarvon and Carter found would exceed all expectations. Located in the Antikamer as well as the tomb itself, they discovered more than 5,000 artifacts from ancient Egypt. And in addition to everyday objects such as sandals, linens, and wine, there were priceless treasures including an alabaster chalice, animal skins, and a coffin crafted from solid gold. With interest in Tutankhamun at its peak, visitors flocked to the Valley of the Kings to see these artifacts for themselves. But before long, their fascination would turn into fear. On April 5, 1923, Carvarvan died, just five months after discovering the tomb. And before long, rumors of a curse had begun to spread. At the time, the idea of a mummy's curse was already a theme in popular literature. And even though Carnarvon had long been sickly and probably died from an infected mosquito bite, he was soon cast as the victim of supernatural powers. After all, he had desecrated Tutankhamun's tomb. Had the pharaoh avenged himself from beyond the grave? Over the following years, more and more deaths would be attributed to Tutankhamun's alleged curse. According to some reports, several members of Carter's team, including his secretary and the man who x-rayed the pharaoh's tomb, had passed away in quick succession. In fact, if the rumors were to be believed, even those who had merely visited the excavation weren't safe. Although there was little evidence to support these claims, the story of Tutankhamun's curse took hold. And amazingly, it's still believed by many today. Meanwhile, those who had celebrated the pharaoh as a cultural icon during the highs of Tutmania now began to look on him as something to be feared. But who really was the man who'd lain undisturbed for thousands of years before Carter dragged him into the 20th century for all to see? Born in 1341 BC, Tutankhamun inherited the throne of Egypt from Akhenaten when he was just nine years old. Hence his nickname the Boy King. Beyond that, details of Tutankhamun's life are vague. 
We know he married his half-sister at a young age and that his reign was mostly dominated by his vizier, I, who eventually succeeded him after his death. It's also thought Akhenaten had attempted to steer Egypt away from worshipping the old gods, but the boy king returned religion to the people. History hasn't remembered Tutankhamun as a great warrior. Certainly, the moniker of boy king has done little to paint him as a man feared and respected by his peers. On top of that, he's described as remaining short with a slim build right until his death at the age of 19. In fact, some experts have theorized that Tutankhamun was suffering from some kind of genetic disease or that he was physically deformed. And in 2005 a CT scan of the pharaoh's remains revealed a number of irregularities, including a clubbed left foot, cleft palate, and possible scoliosis of the spine. Given these conditions and the pharaoh's young age at the time of his reign, most have assumed that Tutankhamun was a somewhat feeble ruler. But there are plenty of people who have always doubted this assessment. And recently, evidence has emerged to suggest that they may have been right all along. After all, if Tutankhamun really had suffered from a club foot, he would have walked with an abnormal gait, and anatomists who have examined his remains have found nothing amiss. Moreover, such a serious condition would likely have affected his leg bones. But again, there has been no evidence to support this found within the pharaoh's tomb. There were, admittedly, a large collection of walking sticks found buried alongside Tutankhamun. Indeed, this is something which has been used to support the theory of a weak and frail king. But some have argued that these artifacts were merely symbols of authority, often associated with higher-ranking members of Egyptian society. In fact, there's a growing contingent of people who feel that Tutankhamun has actually been misrepresented. That he may, in fact, have been a true warrior all along. The best evidence for this has come from a monument initially overseen by the boy king himself more than 3,000 years ago. During his reign, Tutankhamun worked to restore the legacy of his grandfather Amenhotep III, whose religious beliefs had been purged from Egypt under Akhenaten. And part of this involved completing a grand colonnaded hall at Luxor Temple, stretching 150 feet long and decorated with intricate reliefs. Among these is a depiction of the Apit festival, one of the most important events in the Egyptian calendar. According to historians, the Apit festival took place every year, beginning with a procession from the nearby Karnak temple. From there, three statues would be taken by boat to Tutankhamun's colonnade hall, where they would remain for a week. During that time, the idols became the focus of much worship and celebration. Initially, these carvings showed Tutankhamun in a positive light, taking pride of place in the ceremony and making offerings to the gods. But after his death, his name was obliterated and replaced with that of Haremheb, a later pharaoh. And that's not the only way in which the boy king's legacy has been lost and obscured. At one time, it's believed, an almost two-mile-long road lined with statues connected Luxor Temple with Karnak Temple to the north. And in recent years, archaeologists have been working to uncover this ancient route. In the process, they've discovered several medieval buildings originally constructed from repurposed temple stones. Some of these blocks, it turned out, had come from Tutankhamun's colonnade hall. According to experts, the boy king probably demolished an earlier building raised by Akhenaten and used the materials for his own construction projects. But around 200 of the stones are thought to have had a different origin altogether. Despite bearing Tutankhamun's name, researchers from the University of Chicago believe these blocks did not come from the colonnade hall. Instead, they once formed part of the mansion of Nebkeperer at Thebes, a mortuary temple dedicated to the boy king. Apparently, construction on this building was begun by the pharaoh himself and completed by I after his death. Throughout the New Kingdom era, which began in 1550 BC and lasted for almost 500 years, it was common for pharaohs to construct these mortuary temples. When they died, these buildings would serve as focal points of mourning. Offerings would be made here to ease the king's transition into the afterlife. Traditionally, the walls of these temples were decorated with scenes from the pharaoh's lives, the moments which they considered their greatest deeds. In Hatshepsut's version, for example, scenes depict a famous expedition south in search of frankincense and myrrh. And at the complex dedicated to Ramses the Great, carvings recreate his victory at the Battle of Kadesh. 
So, what did Tutankhamun choose to decorate his mortuary temple? If, as many suspect, he was a weak ruler who committed no great deeds, we might reasonably expect a blank slate. But Ray Johnson, an Egyptologist who has been meticulously piecing together the stone blocks, believes this isn't the case. Despite having only a small scattering of blocks from the site, Johnson was able to reconstruct much of the decor that once lined its walls. According to Smithsonian Magazine, ancient Egyptian artists would draw on a series of templates or archetypes to complete the vast murals that appeared in mortuary temples. In an October 2022 article for Smithsonian, author Bob Breyer wrote, if you only have a few blocks but know what the rest of the scene should be, you can pretty much fill in what is missing. If you have a block that shows reins tied to a waist, for instance, you know it is a pharaoh's waist, and that there will be a pharaoh above the waist shooting a bow, a chariot beneath the waist and a pair of horses to the left. And if you have one block with a Nubian with an arrow in him, you know there will be lots more Nubians with arrows in them. Over the course of a decade, Johnson slowly built up a picture of Tutankhamun's mortuary temple, using the few relics he had at his disposal. And what he found has cast doubt on the notion of the feeble boy king. Instead, he claims the ruler is depicted as a warrior in the throes of battle. In one scene, Johnson believes, Tutankhamun can be seen in the midst of a siege against an enemy fort. In another, he is depicted as victorious in a battle with Nubian troops. And in one particularly grim detail, the boy king is shown receiving the severed hands of deceased soldiers, a traditional way of tallying the dead. Elsewhere, Tutankhamun is depicted carrying off a live Syrian prisoner in a cage, presumably taking him back to Egypt as a trophy. In fact, the mortuary temple is full of images that paint him as a ruler to be respected and feared, demonstrating bravery on the battlefield. But was this a true interpretation of historical events or simply propaganda? Realistically, there would have been nothing to stop Tutankhamun demanding to be depicted as a warrior. And that would be the case even if he never actually set foot on the battlefield. But evidence such as a piece of armor found within the boy king's tomb adds weight to the theory these carvings depict fact and not fiction. Ultimately, though, nobody can know for sure unless further evidence is uncovered. According to experts, artists tended to add dates to depictions of specific battles, leaving the space blank if the scene was meant to depict a generic conflict. So, if archaeologists can unearth more of Tutankhamun's mortuary temple, they might be able to determine the truth once and for all. After all, Tutankhamun's reputation as the boy king is something of a misnomer. In fact, the ruler would have been 19 when he died long considered a man by the standards of the time. Might his short reign have been filled with brave deeds and victorious battles, rather than the feeble leadership that he's associated with today? Certainly, it's true that Tutankhamun's death is considered a mystery today. And some have suggested the infected leg wound long touted as the cause of his demise might have been sustained in battle. If so, then the reputation he has acquired 3,000 years down the line seems even more unjust. On the other hand, various historians have claimed that a hunting accident, sickness, or even murder, were the real reasons behind Tutankhamun's premature death. And over the years, interference from grave robbers has further muddied the waters. But as excavations continue in the ruins of ancient Egypt, we may yet uncover the real story of the boy king. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.